Hey guys, so I decided to take a look at Matt Walsh's What is a Woman? On top of that, I was thinking, hey, might as well just uh, turn it into a reaction video. And this is probably my, actually, this is my first reaction video that I'm making right now. So yes, and I decided to go with What is a Woman for my first reaction video ever made. So wish me luck, guys. I hope I do good at this, and I hope you enjoy uh, my review. Um, I'm going to put in my two cents once in a while. I'll pause the movie where it has to be paused, and I'll throw in my two cents, my opinion, what I feel, what I what I think should be added or included in the movie, whatever. But whatever comes to mind, I'll pause the movie, and I'll throw my two cents in. And, yeah, so uh, this is my first reaction to an actual movie, well, a documentary to be exact. So let's give this a try, guys. Let's do this. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Many years! Many years! Being a dad is one of the great privileges of my life. Give my son a BB gun and that's just about all the emotional support he needs. My daughter, on the other hand... I've heard people say that there are no differences between male and female. Those people are idiots. I'm a husband. I'm a father of four, I host a talk show, I give speeches, I write books. I like to make sense of things. But making sense of females is a whole other matter. Even astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, who could come up with a theory on black holes, was completely dumbfounded by women. Women, they are a complete mystery. And now our culture is telling us that the differences between girls and boys don't matter. That if you identify as something, then you are that thing. How do we help our kids make sense of this when they're bombarded with conflicting messages about gender and identity? Forget trying to figure out women. The real question is, what is a woman? Family therapist, which basically means I've been trained up to think about like systems, family systems, how we were raised up, how that shapes who we are today. So on your website, if you'll, if you'll bear with me, sure. quoting, you say, I use a combination of approaches in my therapeutic work, including anti-oppression, feminism, feminist and narrative frameworks, I rely deeply on systems theory and understanding that individuals are products of and in dialogue with our surroundings, including our families, broader culture, workplaces, nature, and political climates. What uh, does that mean? Yeah, um, so yeah. thinking about the modalities that I use, the development journeys. If my mom who gave birth to me is a woman, <laughs> and my wife is a woman, um, though I haven't asked her, maybe I should. Um, but if they're all women and also... What's funny is that he goes, hmm, I wonder if my wife's a woman, although I haven't asked her. And she's just like, like nodding, like, not like a, like, it's not like a, like a, it's not like she's laughing with him. It's kind of more like she's like, she's like smiling. She's acknowledging this uh, approach as if it's normal, as if, um, uh, that, like it's something normal that he should probably ask his wife to double check if she actually is a woman. <laughs> hey, hey, baby, we've been married for uh, 20 years. And right now, you should just tell me, are you actually a woman? Like, have you been feeling like a woman for 20 years? Uh, are you actually a man stuck in a woman's body? Hmm. <laughs> it's like, basically, and she's just nodding her head, smiling, mm-hmm, kind of, yeah. Like, she's not being humorous right here. She's not laughing. She just kind of, 
like saying encouraging this she's just encouraging this behavior it's just so weird so bizarre uh the boy who sits down with you and says i, I think i'm a girl actually is one then then what is a woman mm. Great question. I'm not a woman, so I I can't really answer that. Is this supposed to be a professional? Like, like this is some this is supposed to be some kind of professional person in a specific field of transgenderism. And her response is, hmm, yep. Hmm. Like <laughs> and he just strip he strip asked her a basic question what is a woman and her response is hmm yep mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> i don't know um yeah uh I, this is this is just just the beginning i wonder how, how much more cringe i could take i, I don't know if i'll just be able to survive this whole film Let's just give it a try. My name is Michelle Forcier, um, and I have a medical degree from University of Connecticut Residency, University of Utah Pediatrics, and I've worked for a number of different Planned Parenthoods for 20 years. I do advanced contraception and abortion, as well as gender hormones, and sort of looking at the whole sort of schema of gender, sex, and, and reproductive um, justice. So you've done a lot of work in this field. Could you just start by telling us? Sure. Uh, at what age can a child first begin to transition into another gender or identify themselves as a gender different from how they were born? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. Some children figure out their gender really early, and the reason why we are say, oh, that's, that's interesting or important is because they're so she's saying that babies can literally know their own gender. I don't think a baby's even thinking about that. A baby's just thinking, hey, I want food. Give me breast. I go to sleep. And it's just a cycle that keeps repeating itself. <laughs> that's all that's on their mind. You know, like, I, like, but. For some reason, this woman's claiming that the baby is already deciding for itself. What is it? Am I a woman? Am I a man? I'm on this journey. Wow. If I say that I, I feel a certain way, then obviously you can't tell me I don't feel that way. Yeah. But just because I feel that way, does that mean it's, that it's true? I mean, if it's your I, yeah, if it's yours. It's too. truly like none of my business. Who so we all have our own. In my reality, I am Double Keen, Dragonborn, Fusrota. Hmm. Yeah, I should not be a comedian. <laughs> it's just not going to work. <laughs> yeah, but according to these two, I'm assuming those are women. According to those two creatures, um, like they're telling Matt Walsh right now that if it's your reality, that's reality, I guess. So, yeah. So why can't I be Double Keen from Skyrim? Realities? What if I said, I want you to say that it's true that I'm a woman? Would you say that? Okay, you're a woman. I would also say that. If you want. I, yeah. I, I honestly don't care. Like, whatever makes you happy. What true that... to you can be can be false to me. So like, it, it's not, it's. Like what if I said that it's true? My truth. They're outside wearing masks. I bet you they're triple vaccinated, and they're still wearing masks. I guarantee the. I, I guarantee those two, those two people, those two creatures, are triple vaccinated, triple vaxxed, whatever. Like, because usually, usually it's those types who would still continue wearing a mask in public. And of course, it makes sense why, you know, she would also be encouraging him to believe whatever 
he should believe, you know, like, oh, if you're a woman, you should, if you think you're a woman, you're a woman. And I'm triple vaxxed, I'm triple whatever, triple, triple dose, triple dose, whatever, triple shot. Yeah. And I'm wearing a mask too. So, yeah. So it makes sense why, you know, she would be supporting this whole transgender ideology. Look at those masks, you know, it just proves it right there. You know, so yeah, moving on. The truth is that you don't exist. Does that mean you, you no longer exist? I mean, if that's your truth, sure, I don't. Because but, but, it's But like, you do. Well, I mean, if you're saying oh. that I do, then I do. Well, I don't even talk about social context. I'm just, I'm just trying to start by getting to the truth, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable with that language of like g getting to the truth again in social why, why life. Is that, why is that uncomfortable? Because that this 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 professor Sylvie doesn't know um, the dif difference between X Y chromosomes and X X chromosomes. <laughs> like, like he couldn't just say, okay, yeah, uh, X X women, X Y men, right? No, he just has to go beyond science. This is not science. This is pseudoscience right here. Pseudoscience, philosophical mumbo jumbo garbage. That's all it is. This is not. This is not a real professor right here. I'm disputing the fact that he, he's a professor, and I don't care if if he thinks he's a professor in his own reality. Like this guy's not. This guy should not be a professor. This guy should be fired. It sounds actually deeply transphobic to me. Um, and, if you, and, and if you keep probing, we're going to stop the interview. Male gametes. That's what makes me male. No, your, your sperm don't make you male. Then what does? It's a constellation. In reality, in truth, OK? Whose truth are we talking about? The same truth that says we're sitting in this room right now, you and I. No, you're not listening. If I, if I oh, wow. You see that look on her face? That's demonic. That's demonic possession right there. Like, that is just evil. That is evil right there. That is not a person who's right in the head. I mean, she's already not normal for believing what she's believing. Like, uh, but just look at her physique, her body. It's just so, I don't know. Just like. Uh, like it doesn't have any like I don't know I don't know how to say the physical strength but it's just like this gross corpse just like talking and yeah if I see a chicken laying eggs and I say that's a female chicken laying eggs did I assign female did I assign female or am I just observing a physical yeah, reality like, that's just, happening in the world yeah that woman she just looks so evil right there and it, it seems like basically, you know, she's been involved in a lot of this pseudo scientific behavior and the demons crept in, right? And now she, she's just possessed, right? And she's not taking reality seriously anymore. She is in her universe right now. She's not in the room with Matt Walsh right there. Just. Yeah, that's just crazy. Does a chicken have gender identity? Does a chicken cry? Look, look Does at that. Does a chicken commit suicide? Let's that, like just the way her expressions. Like, there's some demonic entity there. That's just that's not normal. It's very creepy. Frame it because you're talking. You're trying. A chicken to has sex like any like any biological organism. A chicken has organism. an assigned gender, but a chicken doesn't have a gender identity. So we assign female to chickens when they lay eggs. That's a, we that's... assume they're female if they lay eggs. Now I was told that really everyone agrees with the current approach to gender and transitioning kids and all of that. And if you don't agree, that you're a dinosaur and a bigot. So. Are you a bigoted dinosaur? I'm not bigoted and I'm not a dinosaur. I am rooted in reality and in science. Who's reality? There's one reality. For about all four years of high school, I was forced to compete against biological males. I only competed against them in the sprinting events. 
but I raced against these athletes over a dozen times throughout the years, and every single time I lost. Did, did they inch you out of medals that you would have won otherwise, or trophies you would have they won? They beat me out by 20 meters out of medals, and qualifying spots, I missed out on qualifying for New England's. I had, and I had to go in the long jump and the four by 200 meter relay, so I was forced on the sidelines in my own event, and if they were not there, I would have been able to qualify. So I missed out on so much throughout my high school career. Did they win all the events or almost all the events? Between the two of them, they won every single event they competed in. How does that, how does that feel? It is so frustrating and heartbreaking because we elite female athletes train so hard to shave just fractions of a second off of our time. And going into races knowing that we will never be able to win. Feels like all that work gone to waste. It does. After so many losses, it just gets to the point of why am I even doing this? Why am I keep training so hard and sacrificing so much just to place third and beyond? And then they're racing the girls and they're, you know, first and second place. Is that indicative of some kind of unfair advantage that those individuals might have against the girls? No, it's not indicative of an unfair advantage. And I think part of the proof of this oh. is that oh, more wow. transgender girls are coming out in high school and still playing sports. And they're not winning. You know, the Connecticut case is the exception. Um, it got a lot of attention because those Ugh. two trans girls performed well. But there are many. Oh, wow. Ugh. Ugh. I can't stand that. Ugh. I don't know what that is. But I, right now, I don't know if I should misgender that type. What is that? <laughs> like, what, what is this? This creature? This is some kind of creature. Oh, just, oh, oh. I cannot take this thing seriously. Wow. Many, many yeah. more trans girls competing in sports and they don't excel yeah, because we kinda, at the we, end of the day whether yeah. or not you win a game is not just is about how hard you work in your practice and most of us aren't going to win and that goes for transgender athletes too let's go girls The norm is that transgender youth don't win that much in sports games. Alana McLaughlin was very appreciative for Provost to take this fight. I don't know how appreciative it is now, but she got a couple punches in. It is the very much the what the transgender females are winning out against or beating they're beating the biological cisgender women and that creature, that weird troll, whatever monster. Thing, it's denying this. It's saying, "Oh no, that's not true." You know, "Oh no," uh, like uh, like the Connecticut thing was an exception, right? No, look at this. You know, like it's not an exception to the rule. Look, you know, the transgender uh, females are beating the the normal biological women. Exception when a transgender young person does win, and the this tap, and it's because there's not really an advantage to being trans. Um, only a few people are going. Oh yeah, the the tall blonde guy <laughs> earlier. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I, I heard about that. Yeah, like they had, like the female basketball team, and this guy's like super tall, and and then what is this? Is some kind of some kind of track team, swim team, probably track. Oh, look at that guy. That's a dude. That's a literal dude. To lead the pack. There are some slight Wait, differences, that guy. but does it translate? That that, yeah, that, that that guy right there who's like shooting that hoop right there. Yeah, that tall guy, he, he signed up for uh, women's basketball. He, and like their team just started winning. Oh, jeez, I don't know why. But wow, like they're, they're, he's just like throwing the ball into the hoop. So he's like barely trying, you know, he's super tall and he's got the, the body, the physique. <laughs> yeah to a competitive advantage, I think you'd be very hard pressed to prove that. Oh. If 
there was a big advantage to being transgender in sports, then we would see transgender women totally dominate. And over the last half of the pool, but they are, they are dominating. Leah Thomas. I feel like a woman. Transgender swimmer Leah Thomas breaking barriers and records. But in a new article, Sports Illustrated calls the college senior the most controversial athlete in America. Leah obviously helps us do better, right? Leah's swimming really fast. Leah's performance helps the University of Pennsylvania swim team. The feeling of winning doesn't feel as good anymore because it feels tainted. There was a lot of things you couldn't talk about that were very concerning, like a locker room situation. If you even brought up concerns about it, you were transphobic. If you even bring up the fact that Leah swimming might not be fair, you were immediately shut down as being called a hateful person or transphobic. But there's never any conversation. The coaches don't sit everyone down and acknowledge what everyone's really upset about. So Pat actually brought in People high up in the athletic department to talk to us. They brought in someone from like the LGBTQ center. They brought in someone from the psychological services. So you, you're upset about what's happening, and so yeah. you need psychological help. Yeah, and they told us in this <laughs> meeting, they said, look, yeah. we understand oh, there's an array of yeah, emotions, you're, you're but upset. Leah swimming is a non-negotiable. However, we can help you. Yeah, you're upset, you know, so here's a psychologist to make you feel better. You know, anonymous. just accept Leah Thomas. This for this interview. Yeah, Why did you decide accept, accept him you as your teammate. I know you're sad about this. You know, just talk to the psychologist. That you'll you feel better. If you speak up about it and you say anything negative, that, like, your life will be over in some way. Like, you'll be blasted all over the internet as a transphobe if you come out, and then you'll never be able to get a job. Like, anyone who wants to hire you will look you up and see you're transphobic and your life will be over. I'm Congressman Mark Takano. Trans Month of Visibility is a time to recognize the strength, diversity, Ooh. and resiliency of the transgender community. Together, we can make our country and so world cringe. a more accepting place oh, by speaking so out cringe. against transphobia at the source and supporting the trans community by getting the oh, no. quality act this signed is, into This law. is wrong. Congressman, thank you for, for being here. Thanks for joining us. And athletic events. Let's get into more specific policy issues. There, there are some women who say, and I've I've talked to a few who say this. They say, hey, you know, I'd like some privacy in the bathroom. Uh, I'd prefer not to encounter you know, naked penises, frankly. Uh, they say even that the penis is a telltale sign that someone is a male. I mean, there, there are people who have kind of really bought into the, to the rumor that um, only men have penises. What? How do we account for that? How do you respond to that? Um, well, um, well, what I would say See, is he, he doesn't know that, what to say. Uh, most transgender people uh, that I know, um, and it's a very, I think, distinct minority of people it's a very it's a it is a it is a very i think uh we're talking not about a lot of people um i think a person who wants to use a woman's bathroom who identifies as transgender really does think of themselves as a female so how we go about trying to um you know uh respect their basic right to live, I think will be an important, an important part of this law. And um, With the bathrooms, law. well, wait a minute, ba bathrooms are, bathrooms are, you know, where you want to take this conversation instead of the basic right to just life is something wait, that I'm kind of mystified that you're kind of not focusing. Did, did you, did he just say like right to life? This guy's pro-life, <laughs> so he's against abortion because he's he's uh, talking about a pro-life issue now. But no, this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's thinking of what to say. He's confused by Matt's questions and everything, and so it just gets worse. Turn on first. So we're going straight to the controversy over bathrooms. Um, hmm. So you know what? I think I think this interview I mean, is over. 
Yeah, I think oh, I think this interview is over. He, he, he doesn't. He he's got no, he's got nothing else to say. He doesn't know what to say. So the interview is over. Um, yeah, I I'm confused. I don't know how to answer your questions. Uh, I'm uncomfortable. The interview is over. <laughs> yeah, and this guy's a degenerate. Just look at his face. Gross. One last question. Uh, well, I, 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 what, the interview's what, over. Please we want to know cameras. what what is a woman. Please let's turn off the cameras. Excuse we, me. I, so we're gonna end the interview. If you guys could please pack up and return the office. That's exactly. I that. just wanted to know. Okay. Thank I came you. all this way to know what. Thank you. Another fair question. I just wanted to know what is a woman. And you're not gonna find out. A woman has its own duty, and a man has its own duty. And a lady cannot do duty the duty of a man, and a man cannot do a duty of a woman. <laughs> so simple. And Can so a man true. become a woman? <laughs> no. No? No. Nope. What about a transgender? Transgender? What's a transgender? <laughs> no. No? It looks like to, if you want to become a lady but you're a man, you have something wrong in something your mind. Wrong. Something yes. wrong in your family, something wrong in you. It's true. What about honestly? Someone... And it was interesting. It, it's true. Like a lot of these people, they have some sort of family trauma or some kind of personal trauma or some kind of, you know, maybe not a trauma, but they're missing a father or they're missing a mother, right? Like they don't, there's something wrong with their family or. They could be, you know, possessed by evil spirits. And these guys, these uh, Maasai guys, they don't have internet, television. I'm assuming all this. I'm assuming they don't have internet or television, right? But these people, they already just know, wait a minute. Well, if you are a man and you're acting like a woman, there's, there's something wrong with you. There's something, there's something wrong, something wrong with your family. Right. And and these are not people who have degrees or with these Western Western style degrees. No, these are just simple folk, right? Living in some primitive third world, not even third world, this is straight up caveman era. And and they already understand, okay, you're a man trying to be a woman, there's just something wrong right here. It's inherently wrong. You know, <laughs> so something wrong with your family, something. And these people understand this. Simple, primitive people understand basic psychology, basic spirituality, right? And like uh, our pseudo intellectual elites, they don't get it. It was non binary. Come again? Non binary. <laughs> Come again? Uh -huh. you know, like non He's like, like uh, someone is non-binary. He's like, like come again. Man. Yeah, someone's like, someone is is neither. There's something else. Is that? <laughs> it's like, how do I explain this? How do I explain this to my fellow tribes? <laughs> He's saying we have never seen things like those. For a man, he has a penis. For a woman, he has a vagina. So we know this is a lady. This is a man. What if it's a woman with a what if it's a woman with a penis? Both. <laughs> He's like, what? Get the money we're getting grow. It's like what? <laughs> like, people are laughing. Is that is that a dumb question? <laughs> uh, this guy is just saying because they have never heard something like that. This is their first time. So he Never heard a, it before. A, 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 the question is, let's say if you want to sleep a woman, definitely you'll do sex. Sex with a woman. Yeah. And you f the vagina, is it? <laughs> but for the man, <laughs> where from... do you f Wow, this guy is explicit. I don't know all the logistics of it. <laughs> uh, based on what I'm saying, would you ever want to move to America? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's perfectly normal for 
10 years and up. Here's just one page I want you to see here. What is this degeneracy? Look at that. For 10 and up, huh? It's, it's unspeakable what these people have done to our children. When did that start? When was it decided that we need to start teaching kids about this stuff at such a young age? So I'll answer that with one word, Kinsey. Kinsey was a social reformer. He wanted to... Uh, I'll disagree. I would say that was 1919 when we allowed a certain gender to vote. Rid society of Judeo-Christian values when it came to sexuality. Uh, uh, Judeo-Christian values. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's just so cringe. Uh, like, this documentary was okay, and then she just ruined it with the whole Judeo-Christian values speech. Uh, uh, that's just, uh, no, no. Uh, I gotta watch this, I gotta watch this. And he worked very hard to do that, and I would, would say he succeeded. He believed that true happiness is found in a life of perverse sexual experimentation, no matter the age. What came out is that his research was fraudulent. Kinsey based his fraudulent conclusions on data he collected from convicted sex offenders and child molesters. His research was conducted in prisons, not everyday America. He also performed horrific sexual experiments on children, some under the age of one. His most influential book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, contains an infamous chart called Table 34, which documents the orgasms of very young kids, including babies as young as five months old. But instead of suffering the consequences for his heinous actions, he was and still is celebrated by academia and Hollywood. His ideas form the foundation for sexual education in public schools today. How do we get from this to... That guy looks like a creep, too. It's just... Ugh, that's just crazy, you know? Ugh. But this is the consequences of a society that allows basically almost everyone to vote. I mean, I'm pretty sure Matt Walsh doesn't uh, agree with this statement, but uh, this is what it has led to. Right, this is what democracy or a representative democracy leads to. You eventually have freedom of speech and such creatures, such vile creatures, they have the right for freedom of speech, right? And then these people, they're funded by money, you know? Like uh, I'm pretty sure he was funded by somebody. His research was funded somehow, right? Right, and he did not go to prison. He didn't suffer the consequences. It's amazing. And it just makes you want to question the whole system, which I wonder, is Matt going to do this? Is he going to actually question the system that did not punish Kinsey for his, for his behavior, for his degeneracy, for his crimes? Okay, well, now we have another a very important character, and his name was John Money. John Money was a psychologist and professor at Johns Hopkins University. Gender ideology was his brainchild. In fact, he coined the terms gender identity and gender roles. And according to Money, babies are gender neutral at birth, and ultimately environment determines whether a person is a man or a woman. Money was telling the world about his theory that a boy could be raised as a girl and do just fine, and vice versa. And so Money tried out his theory on two young twin boys, the Reimer twins. When the twins were eight months old and they went to be circumcised, the first twin, whose name was Bruce, um, something went wrong with the machinery and his penis was burnt off. They stopped and didn't do a second circumcision on the other twin, as you might imagine. And the parents, of course, didn't know what to do. How are they gonna raise this child? John Money convinced Bruce's parents to transition him into a girl. Bruce's parents to transition him into a girl. Money also conducted sexually abusive experiments on the twins throughout their childhood, including 
forcing them to simulate sex acts on each other. He reported up to the age of... Well, see, I'll say this. Any parent who allows their child to get circumcised is the type of parents who would actually put their child to that kind of experiment. I'm sorry, but circumcision is basically torture against it is torture against children. Circumcision should be illegal, to be honest. I'm just saying, like, I don't care about your relig religious preferences. It, it should be an illegal act. It's an evil act right now, these days, and it should not even exist. And, and so any parent who allows their kid to get circumcised, I would not be surprised if they would allow their child to be experimented in such a fashion, because why not? Right? I mean, if you're torturing your child like this, you might as well, you might as well hand them over to some creepy professor like that. Yeah. So it makes sense. It makes sense why, you know, the parents did not sue this crazy evil professor for the crimes that he committed because they had no problem circumcising their child. And because of them, their child is missing a penis. So yeah, it's just, it's just cringe. So yeah, uh, just be, beyond words. Ten, that this was a complete success. Well, wasn't true. The results were a disaster. Bruce could never fully accept his female identity. Eventually his parents told him the truth and he chose to transition back to a boy taking the name David. As an adult, David spoke out about the abuse and the damage done to him by John Money. The girls would do their things with their Barbies and things like that, and that wouldn't interest me. Mm -hmm. And uh, things such as trucks and uh, building forts and uh, you know getting to the odd fist fight and mm -hmm. climbing trees, that's the kind of stuff that I like, but it was unacceptable, so I'd never- As a girl. As, as a girl, I had no place to, to fit in. The trauma that he and his brother and his entire family went through left deep scars. His brother died of an overdose uh, when he was 38, and then David died, committed suicide. There was never a retraction or an apology from John Money. Instead, his ideas were adopted by mainstream psychology, and they formed the basis of gender ideology today. Or you could say this was the whole point of psychology is to destroy society, to subvert society. And of course, the psychologists themselves are also puppets working for their own masters, for the, for the for dark evil uh, entities. And so, yes, uh, it makes sense. You know, this person did not apologize because he viewed himself as a god. And so the Psychological Association did not condemn this because that's their goal. Their goal is to do this to society. Their goal is to do Satan's work. That is why the Psychological Association or whatever Matt Walsh mentioned, that's their end goal. It's now a female a sales executive that kind of just didn't fit in any box. When psychologists or somebody that I was in love with or whatever said that I was in the wrong body, I started to think, well, maybe I am. I'm a biological woman that medically transitioned Damn. to appear what, like a male you, through what'd you synthetic do to yourself? hormones and surgery. I will never be a man. I get infections every three to four months. I'm probably not going to live very long. Was there any real discussion of the risks and the side effects and? No. No, there's not. We have um, studies that said that medical transition helps mental health, helps mental health with kids. They've all been retracted, modified, changed. But the only wow. long-term study tells us seven to 10 years. It, wow, it, well, it, it took a person to actually be, uh, become this trans thing to finally realize 
this is wrong. And I have to at least say it's a good thing that this person is not is no longer in denial and realizes the mistake. And this person just admits that, you know, that this is regrettable, right? This was never supposed to happen, right? And unfortunately, many people who go through these procedures, they unfortunately are coping. They keep telling themselves that this was the right procedure, this is a good procedure, and yet most of them are committing suicide because they're still, they still don't know who they are because they've been confused. And like at least this person admits that it was wrong, wrong from the start. And so maybe hopefully some confused person who watches this transgender talk, maybe, maybe they will change their mind about changing, changing their physical body because this is, this is just straight up sad. What happens to, to this person, this person was tricked and lied to, right? And it's just so evil how a lot of these evil Frankensteins are sitting, working in the medical community and just uh, fulfilling the desires of people who are confused for money, for profit. Is when gender people are the most suicidal. After? After surgery. But that's transphobic to say. We're butchering a generation of children because nobody's willing to talk about anything. I have three kids at the age that they're doing this to kids. This is wrong on so many levels. Medical affirmation begins when the patient says they're ready for it. So that could be a, a kiddo who is just starting puberty and yeah. panicking because they're well, getting look at that. breast buds or look at that satanic look, getting... look at that satanic look in her face those eyes the that desperation that she wants to get more kids uh, under her control and this is not a normal person this person is this person is possessed this is not a normal person at all like no getting big Bigger and busier, and they're worried about all kinds of masculine changes. And that way, puberty blockers, which are completely reversible. You can just pause puberty. No, you can't. And then pick it up. No, you can't. In the future. No, you can't. How many studies do they have, long-term studies, on hormone blockers with children? None. I just spoke a month or two ago with a mother whose 14-year-old daughter was put on blockers they discovered after two years this 14 year old girl has osteoporosis that's something that like old women get how can doctors assure parents that a certain medicine is totally safe based on what you're saying i'll tell you why possibly not. it's called capitalism for profit medicine sorry uh, i know this might offend some conservative boomers or some enjoys of capitalism but this is capitalism right here right who cares about morality who cares about anything when you could make a profit if you have a talent and according to Ayn Rand's book Atlas Shrugged you have the mind someone has the money sell your mind for profit right and so uh, a lot of these evil geniuses they have they have the talent. And so there's going to be a buyer who'll pay them and they'll do it. And so, sorry, but uh, this, this is capitalism. Sorry. Yeah, Canada is cringe. It's a cringe country. Yeah. The, how exactly did, did this get into the courts to begin with? Right, so what happened is we set up a meeting with BC Children's Hospital. 
And according to the BC Children's Hospital website, there's gonna be a thorough evaluation and I'm thinking, good, this is gonna be the end of it all. They're gonna clearly see that my child is not the opposite sex. So my ex-wife brings my child into BC Children's Hospital. I get a call less than an hour into that appointment is that they were gonna pump her full of cross-sex hormones within the hour. And I put a halt to that. I said, no. They agreed to, to stop for the moment. They figured, well, let's get the dad on board too. This is all gonna be better. Let's just get everybody on the same page. I said, it's not gonna happen. So I get a letter from BC Children's Hospital in December of 2018. And it says that under the BC Infants Act, they will start injecting my child with cross-sex hormones. And I have two weeks to respond with legal action if I so choose. And so that's how I ended up in court because I did respond with legal action. So you called your daughter a she and you, you went to jail for that? It's considered criminal violence to uh, not use the preferred pronouns. It is no different than let's say I were to take a broomstick and whack one of my kids over the head. So they were treating it in a similar fashion that misgendering, mispronouning my child was the equivalent of family violence. There's no such thing as a Jordan Peterson. Therapist. That's a contradiction in terms. Why? Because you don't affirm if you're a therapist. It's not your business to affirm. You come to see me because there's something wrong. Maybe you come to see me because a destructive element of you is wreaking havoc in your life, about diversity and personality and temperament, but they don't know it. You can have a masculine temperament if you're a woman. Maybe one in 10 women have the average temperament of a man. And yes, you can have many do. Men temperamentally and it's not that uncommon because the differences between yeah. men and women temperamentally aren't that great there are masculine girls there are feminine boys what are we gonna do about that carve them up you as someone who, who started your yeah exactly you know like basically there are still many uh, wonderful uh girls who uh, fe uh, females uh, who do have a male temperament or masculine temperament but they're not men after that right they're still they're still biological women they still give birth they're very happy mothers right they still respect their husbands right and you know like uh and they just have like some of a masculine temperament and yeah and just like there are guys who do have you know some feminine temperaments and yet they're still fathers they're still normal heterosexual men right like they don't say, oh yeah, like uh, I feel like a uh, dang, like uh, I just want to. I need to change my sex now, right? Because I have some sort of temperament that's about me. And Jordan Peterson is absolutely correct here. Yeah, like um, what's interesting, I knew all this stuff. I don't know back when I was in high school. Like I, I just, you know, my, my parents even uh, told me that yeah, like uh, there there are men who, you know do act a little bit more feminine and there are some women who act a little bit more masculine. I didn't, I did not need Jordan Peterson to say this right now is the year 2022. And like this stuff, the basic stuff that my parents told me was back in 2005. <laughs> that, that, that gap right there, <laughs> like, well, that, so much time has passed, right? And so, so, like, basically, in 2002, Jordan Peterson, a professor, has to reiterate what my parents have told me. Just basic info, basic information. A lot of this stuff, you don't need to be a scientist to just realize that a, a man's a man, a woman's a woman, right? You know, like... Okay, just because, just because you have some slight fem feminine t uh, temperaments, just because you do have some masculine temperaments, does not mean that you're the opposite gender, that you're stuck in, that, that you're in the opposite gender st stuck in the wrong body. No, okay? It does not mean that. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that's what these evil people are trying to do, these evil demonic people are doing. They're, do they're brainwashing children into believing that, oh, you, you like to wear a dress? Oh, you're probably a girl, right? Instead of treating it like a childish phase, like a, like a kid being silly and dumb, no, they're treating it like it's normal, right? And same thing with girls. Oh, you like trucks? Oh, uh, you're definitely a boy. 
And <clears throat> and what's interesting, um, this is also not fair to tomboys because tomboys, as we know, uh, many tomboys are straight. Tomboys are females who do have boyish personalities, who have very boyish personalities, and you know they you know, they wear jean, they wear like jean, they wear jeans and and shirts like like guys and everything, and they don't they don't always wear makeup like like girly girls, but they're still straight. And they they still, still want to be mothers, right? It's by the way, it's very natural for a woman to be a mother. Why has this shift occurred, where all of a sudden gender and sex have become so politically and uh, culturally charged? This is what There's Satan a really wants. Ugly history between sex researchers and transgender activists. In the past, if any sex researcher spoke out about science that went against activist orthodoxy or particular narratives orthodoxy. that activists wanted to promote, they would basically have their personal and professional reputations ruined. So what you see is that only experts who tow the party line and say the things that activists like, those are the people who get attention, those are the people who get lifted up in the media. And also I would say people are incentivized to go along with the activist narratives and gender ideology because that helps their career. Could be something in one's social environment that could play some role in somebody coming out identifying as trans would you say that that is definitely part of your story? When I look back, I don't think I would have ever even considered in seeing myself as a boy without these social aspects, especially if I hadn't joined these online communities. I identify as non-binary. I'll officially be changing my pronouns to they, them. My pronouns are he, him, and demon, demon self. Did you hear that? That, that person said demon, demon self. Like, just so, that's just evil right there. And I don't know if this is a woman or a man. I don't know. What is that? Going by they, them pronouns for four years now. I'm they. pretty comfortable they. with it. There was literally a period of a few weeks to a few months. I started out as an ally, and then eventually I was starting to identify as transgender. We are trans models. And so they go on the internet bar. Some people are girls, some are boys, some are both, both, some are neither. Gender is all about how we feel on the inside and how we express ourselves. Ah, the gender fluid teacher. What do I go by in the classroom? I go by teacher Fambrini. As a what is that creature? Teacher, my agenda is to show little boys that they don't have to be like as stereotypically masculine as they can like paint their nails and wear earrings and like still be a guy and like it can be cool. So you worry that there, there could be a sort of social contagion element of this? A teeny tiny bit, maybe. Looking back on it, it was the same pattern, just kids who were really struggling, kids who were very alone and isolated. They have anxiety. They don't fit in with their peers. They don't know where they belong. Maybe they didn't have a welcoming family life. They just got caught up in these communities online. Then they discover, hey, there's this group of people, and they also don't fit in. They're different. They're not sure who they are. Gee, that's where I fit in. I was one of those kids. It got me at 42. Your child doesn't have a chance. This is only going in one direction. You will respect us. Nope, I will not. Dramatization. Johnny's a boy with a big, big imagination. One day he's a dog, the next day a crustacean. Oh, was, is he writing his book, like his novel? Johnny's mom loves her son's make-believe time. Johnny the Walrus, yeah. You're Johnny the Walrus till you oh. change your mind. <laughs> Here you go, Johnny the Walrus. Matt Walsh is out with a new children's book. The book is called Johnny the Walrus. What is this about? It sold out on Amazon in a few hours. So I have embraced my true calling as a, as a children's author, hence the cardigan. The book is about uh, a little boy who's very imaginative and, and playful, and like I have four kids, and they all have an imagination. Yeah. And he likes to pretend to be different things, and one day he pretends to be a walrus. And unfortunately, his mother is uh, is very progressive and thus confused, and so she's convinced by the internet and by society that if your child is is identifying as something, then he really is that thing, and so she tries to raise her child as a walrus. I want this to be a safe place to talk about. 
All right, uh, I'm Dr. Phil, and I I like to invite my guest, uh, Matt Walsh, to talk about Johnny the Walrus, and he's going to tell you that your kid is not really transgender. That's my Dr. Phil impression. Uh, it's not my best. I, I'm pretty sure I do better impressions with Dr. Phil, but it's a late night, so best I can do. You know, it's like if I were to tell you my adjectives are handsome and brilliant. And no matter, whatever you're talking about me, you have to describe me as handsome and brilliant because that's how I identify. So you think it's a delusion? Well, this is one of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. Part of me wants to ask why you care so much uh, because right. it's really right. not that big of a deal. Oh yeah, can I answer right. that? Um, I, I care yeah, she is. Is. So, so oh, basic wait. truth. Oh, wait. Oh, what? Like, if you notice how she was, she was looking down and she's saying, well, why are you, why are you making this such a big deal? <laughs> why are you exposing our agenda? You know, uh, you know, we're a bunch of evil Satanists here. Why are you exposing us to the world? Right. It's, it's one thing when a person struggles with degeneracy. It's one thing when a person has, you know, perverse thoughts, perverse ideas, but it's completely evil when that person says society must accept this. It's evil when the person says that that society must uh, pay for this, right? Society must embrace this because a person could struggle. We're sinners, right? A person could have personal struggles, personal fantasies, right? And that is why you go to confession, you ask for forgiveness of your sins, you pray about it, right? But you should always acknowledge that this is evil, this is wrong, and you should always repent of this these people are not repenting these people are evil they don't, don't want to repent they don't want society to repent they just want to know see these people these are not people who are just struggling with their degeneracy these people who are embracing their degeneracy right it's a completely different thing it's it's one thing to be a struggling degenerate you you you, you hate yourself you don't want others to, to do this you don't want others to accept you for it and then there's these evil folks right here who just completely embraced it and enjoy it, right? And therefore, there, therefore, these people must be stopped. They must be silenced, right? It's not like a, it's not just about us speaking up, right? We should also make sure that these people do not have the legal right to speak anymore. I don't, I don't think Matt Walsh will agree with me on that issue, but. I believe these people should not have freedom of speech. What is a woman? What is a woman? Marry one and find out. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you, you go. go home and ask my wife, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan's like, yeah. He's just like, huh? What is a woman? An adult human female. Who needs help opening this? Okay, guys, uh, so I just finished watching this film. <sighs> it's been a journey. Um, my first video reaction, you could say my first movie reaction for YouTube. And yeah, like I, it, it was not a bad documentary. I would say the ending, uh, the acting at the end, was that necessary? I mean, it's just kind of corny. Yeah, it's like, oh, can you open this jar, pickle, the, these pickles for me, you know, this jar, you know? It's like, okay, yeah. But, but so, it's so fake, you know, it's not real. It just, eh, I think they could have done without that. that. That scene at the end, eh, probably was not necessary, my opinion. Um, but yeah, um, the documentary was not bad, but it's still not enough. Matt Walsh does not tackle the spiritual aspects, the theological aspects, the, the spiritual ramifications for our society going downhill. He does not do that. Jeff Durbin, who, by the way, is a Protestant, but Jeff Durbin, he made a valid, valid point. 
he called that Matt Walsh for not making this more spiritual, you know, for not talking about God's laws, for not talking about the Christian God, you know, for not for not explaining to people that you know we should return to the Bible, we should return to the Word of God. And Matt Walsh doesn't do any of that in his documentary. Like he he's arguing from this uh, scientific biological argument, and and Jeff Durbin, going back to Jeff Durbin, he uh, t- mentioned uh, a term. He said godless conservatism. This is what it is. Matt Walsh, despite being Catholic himself, he's basically promoting this godless conservatism. Like, like basically, you promote you promote conservatism, but you don't have to be a Christian, right? As long as you promote traditional family values on a scientific level, right? As long as you can answer what a woman is, right? You're conservative, right? Like, uh, you don't necessarily need God, right? And Matt Walsh even said something like in response to somebody who called some some other person called out Matt Walsh, and Matt Walsh said. Like the like, you know, he's trying to reach a certain audience, certain demographic, and blah blah blah. It's like, dude, have some sort of Christian principles, right? Because once you have principles, you know, people might listen to you even more, right? We we when you have like some weak principles where there is no true foundation, when your house is built, at, when your castle is built out of sand, not out of stone, it's just going to fall apart. Yeah, your castle might be impressive. For, for a while until the rain hits, till the water hits, right? Boom, it's gone. And so, yeah, um, Matt Walsh did not really mention much about Christianity at all. There's no Christianity in, in this documentary. That's very disappointing. You know, we must return to God. We must come back to God. And as Americans... We must repent and we must recognize the one holy Catholic apostolic church. It is the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is the only true church. And basically, the church is the body of Christ. And we must become a part of this body. And so we must repent as a nation. Matt Walsh did not call for repentance in his documentary. He does not call for repentance of the Republican Party. He does not call for repentance of Ben Shapiro. It's godless conservatism. So the documentary is not bad. It's got some basic levels covered, and it exposed uh, some info that I did not know. I'm thankful to Matt Walsh for that. But it's still not enough. You have to preach the word of God, the laws of God. And so that's my two cents right there. Like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.